And we're live. Welcome everybody to the stream. I have uh, somebody that came up. I kept on getting a lot of, oh boy. Now I get a call. Yeah, they're gonna cancel that. So, okay, let me get back into it. Uh, what Apple can teach you about UI and UX in uh, about 10 minutes. We're gonna do this pretty quickly. And then I'll do a little bit of Q&A. And I got a feeling I'm gonna get another call from I, uh, from my, my brother in Europe. So uh, excuse the uh, interruption. All right, let's just jump into it as we speak. All right, so a few sites I wanna look at. Apple, uh, Stripe, hey, Studio Web, and Studio Web Store. So we're gonna start with Apple. There are f one, two, three, four, five. Uh, five simple rules of uh, user interface design that I think uh, this is for beginners. This is for coders, people who may be very uncomfortable with interface design. And so it's gonna be basic for you. So let's just jump back in. All right, so I wanna point out a few things. Um, you want to strive for simple layouts, whether it be UI in, uh, in your websites or your apps. You want to have great images. Uh, great images are huge. You want to have color matching. Certain colors mix well together, certain colors don't. You want to have a consistent navigation and hero footer. So that's in a nutshell, just in case you guys are in a hurry. Again, if you are a UX UI person, this is pretty basic stuff, but this is targeting new people. So if you look at Apple here, you see you got your, uh, at the very top, you got your menu item, right? It stays always in view, it's kind of cool. And you notice it's very simple layout, big, nice images, right? Uh, very attractive. And you got this giant hero footer, right? Hero footer is just a giant footer, all kinds of information to be able to get to uh, subsections within the site besides the main menu on top here. And if you go to, I don't know, let's go to another page. You see it's fairly consistent, right? Big images, nice defined sections, really good photography, good photos, very nice, you know. And again, at the very bottom, hero footer again, okay? So that's uh, Apple. So let's contrast and compare. Now Stripe, a totally different type of company, a totally different type of business. And you see here that, again, interface here, very consistent. You got the hero drop down menus. Hero just means very big. And if you scroll down, you lose the menu, but again, big, colorful images, clear sections are deline delineated by color. We've got a little bit more dynamic here, uh, some angles and stuff. Um, a little entertainment here. You wanna entertain the lizard brain. See details of my lizard course on all, on all of that. And again, if you look way down, to see nice animations, right? Very entertaining. It adds to, it makes people want to view your site. And again, a giant header, uh, excuse me, hero footer here with all links to the various sections. So if we go to, uh, I don't know, let's go to products, let's go to payments. Come on, straight. There we go. Again, see consistent menu here, same type of design, right? Not all over place. Again, notice the important. This is a, this is not a product selling site in like Apple or something. This is, they're selling just, you know, processing services, but they still make sure that the imagery and the images are clean, fun. You know, it's a little dynamic here. These are all animated GIFs, I'm sure. Uh, the coding section again. Again, always with the hero footer here. There's kind of a, a main navigation. So we go to my site, one of my sites anyway, Studio Web, again, menu here, I put in, we opted for submenu, but again, clean images, uh, I, you know, by some fluke of, of circumstances, this kid we interviewed, he's probably a couple years older now, this kid we interviewed here, he's got the same color shirt as me, so that's good, nice color coordination, color matching, again, and of course we have, not as much of a hero footer because the site is not as big as Apple's or Stripe's in terms of how many pages we got. But again, consistent across the pages, good imaging, good images, etc. Going to it now. Sub pages, a little bit different, but we have the same menu here on top. Again, 
Uh, uh, let's, let's, so here, here we go. Big images with the user interface, you know, nice and clean, our certifications, our certificates, etc. We go to our Studio Web Store. Here I got uh, some animation, a little wow factor. I just put this in. This is a third party widget provider, my Google reviews. Again, good images, clean, simple to navigate, separation, uh, big footer as well, you know. So I'm hoping that you guys, oh, well, let's go into a package. So let's check out uh, my new Python 3 Foundations package certification. Again, you know, very entertaining, very consistent. All the product pages are the same. Again, big hero footer. So there you go. I hope that uh, makes sense. One thing I want to point out, we go back here. You notice the colors are also, why do I have that accessibility? All right, so let's go down. The color patterns are very consistent. These, the colors are very pleasing, you know. This is all basic stuff, but it's very important when it comes to uh, development, whether it be websites or web apps. You want to have those basics, very basics of user interface design, very basics. So invest time in images, invest time in thinking about the color. We talked about this, I think, or did I talk about it in my mentoring group, where you, there are sites like Cooler, I think it's Adobe Cooler, where you just type in a color, let's say the color of the logo for your site or your app, and then it will show you a palette of other colors that you can use to match it. You gotta do these things. This is basic design that goes outside of software development, but it's kind of important. And um, there you go. So, yeah, see how we're doing. Hey, hey, how you doing? Oh yeah, the official channel salute. I hope everybody's good. Uh, hello, Paul, bonjour, comment, comment vas-tu? Ça va très bien, Paul, merci beaucoup. Ça va très bien. What's happening? I'm very good, Rob, I'm very good. How about you? Uh, when is your 170, 70th birthday? It's coming up pretty quick. It's coming up pretty quick, unfortunately. When you're my age, years feel like days, you know? Uh, Michael Levitt, hey, Steph, how are you? Cheers. Hey, so uh, let's see what CN Calibre has to say. Uh, Mr. Harry Potter here. Hi, Steph, indeed, Apple nailed it down when it comes to UI and UX. May I, may I ask if you will be releasing UI at UX course anytime soon? I'm sure it would be fantastical. Love from the Philippines. So I appreciate that. I might do something like that. Right now I'm working on my lizard wizard course um, and expanding the mentoring program a little bit. But once I get that done, maybe I'll, I'll put out a little mini course on UI, UX, some basics uh, that really can help you out if you are designed challenged, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, put them to me. This is going to be a short stream, and uh, but I thought that those basic tips and the examples across different sites would be uh, useful in terms of uh, user interface d design and development. So yeah, that's it. So um, generally speaking, I like white backgrounds, especially if you got a lot of text. If you got images, you can uh, get away with back black backgrounds but uh again very simple site right you don't need necessarily necessarily rather very complex user interface uh to achieve your goal you know uh, let's see it just it looks good of course if you have beautiful product it's a lot easier to make your site look good but look at stripe right they're just selling payment it's just a payment gateway but they still may manage to make it look very good um, so keep that in mind when you're designing your user interfaces, uh, developer types. Um, people are going to judge your application by quite a bit just by the way it looks and feels, how easy it is, how nice it is. So pay attention to that. It's very important. And besides the core functionality that you provide or the core product that you provide, the most important thing is uh, the, the aesthetic and the usability of the UI and UX that you provide for your app or site. I should do a course actually, it's such an important thing. Although I do cover some of those basics in my foundation courses, that's for sure, that's for sure. Sergeant Camacho, hey, hey how are you? I'm good, good to see you too. Thanks for joining the stream. Uh, let's see what my glasses say. Do you focus on content copywriting before thinking about how something will look? 
Um, that's a good question. I think that would depend on the type of project that I'm putting out. Um, no, I tend to, I'm thinking about now, I tend to just work on the structure. If it's information heavy and the information is paramount to the, uh, the purpose of the site, then I will create a layout accordingly. If there's not so much text to display and more video, for example, then I'll lay out the page a little bit differently in that situation. So it depends if it's text heavy or visuals heavy. It could be video or images. The layout will be affected by that. So I don't need to write out too much copy because I have a general idea of how much copy it's going to be uh, involved in the, uh, in the particular project, okay? Uh, Steph, does your team use test-driven development? If so, which framework do you use? Um, we were implementing it, well, we've been implementing it for a little while now in Studio Web. And in all honesty, I forget the framework that he put into place, uh, the lead dev. I, I don't remember. I would have to ask him that. But it's something that uh, probably comes with Laravel because that's what we base our app on. It's, it's a Laravel-based product. Good evening from slowly cooling down sunrise for a house. The weather is It's getting cold. And I am really considering moving down to Florida or getting a place there at least half the year, like half like a big part of Quebecers up here do. So I'm not sure where I'm going to go. A very good friend of mine lives um, in Boca, Boca Raton. I'm thinking of Boca. I'm thinking maybe Fort Lauderdale. I'm not sure. I really like Florida. I've been there quite a bit. Uh, I like its... Uh, its it, an eccentric state, if you will. It's got a lot of diversity there. That's very cool. And I love stone crab and key lime pie. So, and the hot weather. So yeah, I might be joining you down there sooner than you might think. All right, what else do we got? Any other questions? All right, let's see what Scarce has to say. Stefan, I like writing my own style as Django and I haven't explored Bootstrap yet. Would you consider it important to include Bootstrap support for customers, other devs to use? No, not necessarily. Not anymore with uh, CSS Grid and Flexbox. I think that Bootstrap, um, it's a need to nerd tech. It used to be a, a key essential tech, but because of Bootstrap and Flexbox, I would move Bootstrap into the need to nerd category because um, although Bootstrap does much more than grid layout, uh, that was the main reason most people used it. And since... Uh, since... Uh, uh, Flexbox and Grid is pretty widely supported now. I think you can go with it. Is it snowing yet? Yeah, it started to snow. Not today, but we've already had snowfall. It hasn't stuck, but it should stick pretty soon. See, early on in Canadian winters, at least in Montreal, you'll get snow, but then it will melt the next day or two days later. But at some point, it, it just stays cold, so it just stays around until um, March, late, late March. I'm south of Boca Raton, west of Fort Lauderdale. Ah, very cool. Yeah, yeah, when I decide to make a move, I'm going to, like I said, I have friends down there and uh, family who live around, uh, well, in Florida during, you know, for, there are snowbirds. Uh, but I have friends who are moving down there permanently. And uh, so I'm thinking of checking that out. What I might do is like rent condos, Airbnbs, once everything opens up. You know, one week here, one week there. Just get a feel for the neighborhood before I decide which where I will go. Uh, a plus background lighting, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm always trying to improve the presentation quality, including lighting, including lighting. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, I've been working on the Lizard Wizard Brain Course. This basically this course teaches you about the two operating systems that runs your body and runs your brain. And uh, I think it's going to be the most important course I ever put out. And uh, if you're in the mentoring program, uh, you know that that's going to be included as well. So I've been working on lighting, working on lighting and set. I think I'm pretty happy with it. And then uh, that should be coming out pretty soon. Uh, Steph, question. Can you talk about non-coding apps? What do you mean like... Uh, Wix or uh, Squarespace, stuff like that. Yeah, they have their point. They have their usage. 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 
their use cases. <laughs> there are times when they make sense to use their uh, professional tools as much as anything else. You got to learn when you're building websites for people and apps, a lot of the work has nothing to do with writing code. A lot of the work has dealing with them, figuring out what they need, what they don't need, um, you know, mapping out functionality, etc. And that requires a skilled hand. So whether you end up using a no-code tool to prototype it or build part of it or, or not, it, it doesn't matter. You know, it depends on the circumstances. So I think there are tools at the end of the day, long story short, non-coding apps have their place for professional developers. So I wouldn't be worried about them. Do you need a pro understanding of math for learning programming language? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. For most programming, 99% of programming, you'll never do much more than add, subtract, the occasional multiply. So if you can add and subtract, if you know two plus two, or five plus five, and you know five times five, you're pretty good with 99% of programming. Exceptions, AI, maybe some uh, AI machine learning, maybe some data science stuff, maybe some, uh, um, what's the other one, I forget. Yeah, some game engine programming. This is rare stuff. So no, math is not important in reality when it comes to most computer programming. This is my uh, 25 years experience tells me this. Hi, Steph, should back-end developers learn cybersecurity or data science? Yeah, these are things you learn if you really need to learn, if that's going to be your specialization. Sadiq Salah, what are your thoughts on React.js? I think React.js is, uh, is a viable technology. People like it. There are jobs. I'm very job and circumstantial. circumstantial uh, oriented, if you will, in my coding and technology choices, in this case, the React library. Um, use it if you need to use it, you know, but it's viable, definitely viable. If I was building something from scratch, I would personally use Vue, well, as we've done with Studio Web. What do you think about the next five years of web development, for web development? I am seeing a lot of competition in freelancing. There'll be more and more competition, but there are things you can do. Like one of the things I talk about is building reputation. That's key. Like the three most valuable assets you can build in your life. First of all, financial assets, technical assets, meaning skill sets which you can market, and reputation. So these are the three most valuable things you can develop. And in fact, I would argue that skill and reputation are more important than financial assets because you could lose all your financial assets uh, but you could regain them very quickly if you have great reputation and good skills. So, yeah, you want that's so to deal with the competition, you just have to raise your game in terms of uh, reputation. Uh, you got to get a, a good reputation and communication skills. You know, as I tell a lot of people, if you're a good communicator, you will soar ahead of everybody else in the tech field. How can I get hired remotely at North American company while being a third world country? Well, you got to contact maybe if you have a degree, maybe contact some big companies in the uh, in North America, see what they say. Um, I'm not from the third world, so I don't have direct experience. But I know that the governments, at least in Canada and I believe in the U.S., they pay attention to whether or not you have a degree. So that's important. Uh, uh, graphics, having linear algebra. Yes, if you're going to be doing graphics without the libraries, but so much of this stuff has been done already. You just implement the library, boom. What is future and stream? What is future and stream? I'm not sure what that means. I don't know what's going on. Java or Kotlin for Android? Java and Kotlin for... Uh, Java or Kotlin for Android. Do, do Kotlin really take over? Well, apparently Google prefers Kotlin, so that tells you your answer. You could use both, but I know that Kotlin is far quicker to program in, and you can still access the power of the JVM. So I would be doing Kotlin, especially since Google says do Kotlin. Should I go for a job freelancing as a newly trained React developer? Or should I go for a job at or freelancing? Choose based on A, what you want to do, and B, um, where the opportunity lies, right? You may have a harder time getting freelance jobs as a uh, React developer. It might be easier 
uh, to go work for somebody. But, you know, you can jump back and forth, you know. All right, how are we doing for time? Okay, we're going to end this fairly soon. How deep do I need to go to be considered a potential UI UX designer? You just got to be able to make good-looking uh, good looking UX and good-looking UI. That's it. Good, you know, that's it. Well, good functioning UX, to be precise, and good-looking UI. That's what you want, you know. It's not a question of time. Uh, how deep do I need to go? I'm not sure. Okay, deep. It just has to, they have to look good. You have to make things look good. That's it. When building something as a solo dev, when building something as a solo dev, does it make? I don't know what you mean by that. Restate. There we go. Does it make more sense to go full stack JS or use PHP, for instance, for the back end? Ah. Well, JS and uh, React and um, there's a new one on the block with people's claim that are taking over from, uh, not React, from uh, Node and then maybe use like uh, an MVC framework like Express. Um, they're good. Now, the problem I had was that the uh, package management was a real cha really chaotic in that, that environment at the time, especially compared to PHP, which is much more stable. I tend to lean towards PHP uh, in that regard, but that's just me. How can I start freelancing? Well, first thing you do, get my freelance course. That will teach you everything you need to know. Uh, but it, it, briefly, demo site, up, do a couple of freebie projects so you have something to show on your demo site and then start reaching out to business. Uh, the trends for UI and UX for 2021, any new trends? I don't know, I haven't seen. I haven't seen if there's any new trends. Um, I would have to look into it. I would just, again, stick to the old rules with simple, it works, you know. Uh, Amazon is not exactly the most beautiful looking site. If we go to, let's go to amazon.com. Hold on, let me just load this up here, sorry. So we'll go to Amazon and uh, we'll see what that looks like. Amazon, there we go. So, uh, you know, pretty simple. Not exactly a beautiful site, but it's clean, clean images, right? Um, another hero footer. Um, but Amazon, you know, is, you could argue it's the most successful site in the world. Um, consistent menu, speak search bar, that's good. Um, hey, let's see what the holiday deals are. All right, we've got our holiday deals here. Again, very simple, clean images. Yeah, always the hero. Yeah, always the same nav here. It teaches what you need to know. So, uh, here it is, Webflow. Do you think Webflow will be able to do everything front end in the next five years and completely take over front end industry? No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, you know, it's a tool. It's a tool. You still need, like, even if you had a tool like that, you still need to understand, you know, good principles of UI UX, how to organize the information on the page properly, um, how to organize a project, putting everything together, images and video and adding. So there's a lot of work outside of just writing the code. Uh, we had a, a mentoring Zoom meeting this past weekend. Now my mentoring program, we have bi-weekly Zoom meetings that people can participate in. And a couple of the guys were saying that what they'd been discovering is what I've been telling, teaching for a long time now, that a lot of the work had nothing to do with writing code. So I wouldn't be so concerned about these code editors. Hi, Seth. What do you think about Shopify? Oh, Shopify development. If there's money there, take it. Why not? You know. Can PHP use used in blockchain development? I don't know. I imagine somebody created um, some hooks for you there, but I would stick to the mainstay languages in that regard. How can I make a sticky bar on the top of a specific page in WordPress website? Well, any plugins, some tips, please. Thanks for the best. You do that. That's all CSS. Um, that's just CSS. And uh, so what you do is you look up a tutorial on you know, floating bar CSS, and then uh, you take it from there. It's a fixed position, I think it is. Hamza, are you married? No, I am not married at this time. In Flutter, there are future and stream, and I don't understand them. Can you explain it in a brief or do search or do the search as a beginner? I will search for stuff I do not know. 
Yeah, I, I, no, I, I don't know Future and Stream. I'm not a Flutter user. I looked at it briefly and I, I liked the tech. I thought it had legs and it looks like I, I was right about that. Um, I would just do search. That's part of the job of being a developer, by the way. Developers are gonna, ha you have to learn how to search and you're gonna have to learn how to uh, figure things out on your own. That's a big part of the job. That's a big part of the job. Uh, okay, okay, I got that one. Hey, Stefan, I like your channel. You are right about the basics. That is the most important thing. Thanks, Metus. Metus, I, thanks for watching. Appreciate the compliment. It's still worth to learn C. If you want to do C, yeah, there's lots of work in C. Let's give Steph some likes. Yeah, how many likes do you got? 39. Oh, come on, guys. The more likes I get, the more the stream expands. The more the stream expands, the more likely I do more live streams. Uh, so it's, it benefits everybody. With PHP popularity dwindling, would you advise a new dog? It's dwindling. Well, it's, you know, I saw a report. I did it just a video a few weeks ago. Job demand for PHP was up 800 and something percent, more than any other language. Is it dwindling? In some measure, suppose. But when you're at the top, you know, and you dwindle a little bit, big deal. You know, PHP is not going anywhere. PHP will still be one of the top languages in five, ten years. And again, as I teach, once you learn how to program properly, the language becomes secondary in importance. You can just uh, you can just switch off from one to the other. I think Bootstrap is a need to nerd tech. It used to be essential. It's need to nerd. Um, it's good. Um, everybody uses the grid though. I think though I would lean towards uh, native CSS uh, uh, Flexbox. And I forget what the other one's called. CSS Grid. Yeah. Ah, Miss Zorbaz. Thank you, Stefan, for encouraging us. Not a problem. Just keep working at it, you know. You don't, you don't fail until you uh, stop, right? And if you just do a little bit every day, create a habit of it, slowly and slowly this information will become a second nature to you. And uh, that's the key. You want coding to become second nature for you. And you just do that by writing code every day, a little bit every day. As I teach, uh, the number of times you expose yourself to code, the more quickly your brain is going to learn it and understand it. And then one day, things that were complex for you, you will literally wake up one morning and go, oh, now I understand this. It's so easy. It's literally, that's what happens. But the key to it is just a little bit every day uh, give yourself rest a little bit every day. Give yourself rest and you'll pick up all this stuff. But you just just keep going. Just keep going. Uh, Sadiq, I am new. YouTube pushed your live feedbacks my way. Love it so far. Thanks. I'm glad uh, you found my stuff and I appreciate you watching. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing the lives, by the way. So much fun. That's why I stay on. I have to stop myself. I have to stop myself after... 30 minutes. Yes, they do have different uses. Yes, they do. The flex box is for inline, if you will, uh, layout, and the grid is for the, the grand page, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll end off with the next few questions because we're at 30 minutes now and I want to return a couple of calls. I've been struggling to find a field in where I can apply my artistic visual creativity would you advise explore UI UX? Yes, I would. I am in the marketing. I am in marketing, excuse me, but still too much focus on numbers and analysis. Yes, UI UX is UI UX careers um, a little bit more difficult to establish yourself there, but good UI UX people are very rare. Remember, UX is about the user experience, the usability of the page, the logical positioning of elements and nomenclature and set and stuff. And UI, user interface, is more about the aesthetics, how good it looks. So you have to, you have the aesthetics down, so um, you're gonna have to learn the logical placement of things and so on. You have, you're gonna have to work on the UX side of things. It's not terribly difficult, but marrying those two very good solid background. That said, I would still do a full stack uh, training so that you understand the whole the whole stack and that will just make you, your job easier. Even if you end up doing most of your work on the front end with UI UX 
Hey there, Stefan. Stefan says hello to Stefan. Good, good, yeah. Uh, Q, QA job. What do you think about it? Is that a good place to start? QA, question and answer job. Um, why not? Hello from Uruguay. Hey, hey, Rafael. How are you? I am a rookie. Year, year and a half experience. That's good. You, you got through the toughest years. One man team working on our project requires custom CMS. Whoa, yeah. Advice on the best way to go about this, please. Well, uh, I'm assuming the CMS is probably built with PHP. It could be wrong, but it probably built with PHP. They're just going to have to go through the various components, see what the other developers did. That's the problem with custom CMSs. It uh, could be bad. Uh, will web development reach a plateau in demand, like similar job, or is it demanding enough to task will remain high? I think it's going to remain high demand for a while. But uh, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if it's going to be five years from now it starts to plateau or 10 years from now. I don't know. But again, once you know your basics, guys, when it comes to coding, you can move from one specialization to the next, right? It's no big deal. No big deal. How are we doing for time? All right, 30 minutes. Long enough. I'm very tired, actually. I ate, I ate carbs today. I've been doing a keto diet. So today I, I treated myself with some roast potatoes. Um, so it's starting to hit me. I'm starting to get pretty tired. Mm. All right. I'll end off as usual with my ASMR boat video from Maine. If you like the stream, please give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks very much. There we go.